Hey, hi, and hello, Mad Ink Pyro here. I told you guys I was going to start shooting more videos. Um, it is Thanksgiving time. I just wanted to say um, that anybody who's on low carb, no carb, either fears this day or, or absolutely loves it because they just give up on their diet and eat whatever they want. Um, I am giving you alternatives throughout the next week on what to make that's low carb, no carb for Thanksgiving and still gives you that Thanksgiving feeling. So we're going to do a couple cook videos over the next week or so. Um, the one thing that's most important at, a, at the meal other than the turkey is what? You know, some people say sweet potato pie. No. I say mashed potatoes. The ultimate side. Everybody has them. And any type of potato dish, really, you can use this this thing for. Now, when I bring this thing up here, don't get intimidated. It's huge. But it's very useful and heavy. This is a Japanese daikon radish. Now, daikon is mostly used, from what I, I can research, is, is sushi in the U.S. because they, they put it in a little pile and it really doesn't taste like anything. It doesn't smell like much either. So when you cook this down, you boil it once and, and it gets all the flavor out of it and makes it nice and soft. But then you have to do some other stuff to it too, which we'll get into. Now, this radish, it is big. I have a two of them actually because I'm making a lot of a lot of keto-friendly mashed potatoes because we're going to freeze them and save them for after this meal, too. These are cheap. They're not expensive. They're big, so you can make a lot and only have to do half the work. But they can be intimidating if you've never seen one or don't know what they are. Again, there's, there's the Japanese version, which is this version, and then there is a Korean version that's like really long and it's about that big around, but they're really, really long. Um, either one will work. This, I prefer the Japanese. Now, so what you want to do, we're going to start off, this is going to be a two-part thing. I'm going to prep it and show you how to handle it like this. Once we get it all prepped and, and ready to go into the pot, I'm not going to bore you guys with watching me cook it. Um, but once it's cooked, I'm going to start the other video and show you how to convert it from radish to mashed potato wannabe. Um, so anyway, you just get a good vegetable peel, peeler like this, and you want to take this skin off. Now, bigger daikon, the bigger the daikon, the more chances are you're going to have cracks like this in it. That is actually from water absorption. Daikon radish, there is a lot of water in it. And as you can see, it peels pretty easy. It's actually a lot easier to peel a daikon than it is a uh, potato. It's a little softer. And there's, guys, radishes usually have a very distinct smell. And there's nothing coming off of this. I mean, a, a, like literally nothing coming off of it. So, you got your daikon. I would admit, yes, I cheated I had half of it peeled already, but it's quick. This is a Chinese cleaver. If you guys don't have one of these, get one. They're great. They're, it's a sturdy back blade, all solid metal handle. You know, it's a this is this is a Winco uh, Winco stainless KC501 number 260. Um, so look that up. If you want one just like this. These are excellent. They're sharpenable, straight edge, and it gives you really good leverage um, for um, cutting into large stuff like this. I mean, that's sharp. <laughs> that's real sharp. So you want to take the bottom plate off. And the reason is the bottom is where the uh, top, what I'm calling the bottom right now, is actually the top of the radish. Your plant would grow out of here. The radish is underground, like normal radishes. Well, when they harvest them, they cut this off. This has a tendency to dry out and get a little tough. See how tough that was? Now, I'm going to shave a little piece off here. 
just from the back here, just to show you guys. That's a piece of the daikon. It's it should snap and be nice and firm. And you eat it. There's literally very very little flavor, if any. I mean, honestly, it tastes a lot like um, it tastes a lot like a potato, a raw potato, um, without the starchy. So it's crisp, it's clean, very watery. So you want to take this sucker down in half, and you can see where I'm at here. If you have a little line like this, that's a that's a water crack. You want to just take your peeler, if it's got one of those little eye pullers or potatoes, and just cut that little piece out. It just has it just makes it a little little harder to contend with. So what you want to do at this point, lay it down flat base first, and you want to just kind of cleave it down in slices between an inch and well, between a half inch and three quarters of an inch thick, maybe an inch thick, like that. And the reason you're doing that is because we are going to cut these up like you would cut up a standard... You want to hand me that? Like you cut up a standard potato. So we're going to just move this... I got a bowl sitting over here, guys, just so you know. Um... We're going to move it over to the bowl. And again, I've got, you can see that line down through it. And guys, these, these are not expensive. If you can, you can find them. I found this one at a, we have an international food store. Um, not too awful far from us. And you can find them there. Any grocery store can order them in for you. This is not a rare vegetable. <laughs> this is actually fairly common. So, any grocery store can actually order them in for you. You may have to special order them. If you do, you can cut them like this. Cut them up in chunks, cut them up in slices like that, and freeze. They freeze very well. They're radishes. You treat it just like a regular radish. Except there's... There's no spiciness to it. There's no bite to these radishes. So, what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and continue to cut this down like that. And this was a big one, guys. This, this was a, a fairly big one. And then what we want to do is take this slice that we just created and you want to slice it down. Use a sturdy knife. And then you want to cut them in just mashed potato sized chunks. You want to cube them up. Just like that. This stuff turns into the best mashed potato substitute I've ever had. And, you know, I went to culinary school. I'm very picky. Mashed potatoes are kind of my thing. I'm very picky about them. I don't like chunky mashed potatoes. I like them smooth and fluffy. And I, I like them to taste real buttery. You know, I'm, I'm very picky about my mashed potatoes. These are the closest thing to a mashed potato alternative that I've found. So, anyway, you get your daikon all cut down like this. And you want it fairly even pieces so it cooks evenly. Because you're, you're going to boil this. You're going to boil it until these become extremely soft. Once they become soft, we're going to strain them out and let them cool. At that point in time, when I get to that point, I'll come back with, with part two on this. To show you how to put these together to make the best, absolute best... Keto mashed potatoes you will ever have in your life. Guys, get healthy, get happy, and I'll see you in part two.